We are very uh, thankful that he's here to share his knowledge and expertise on retouching and preserving your photographs and the materials that you have. Thank it's you. Like if, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, I always thank God for waking up in the morning to be here with you. It's, it's truly uh, nice to be able to get to another day. Um, I also thank the uh, study group and the Shorefront Legacy Center and all the volunteers and everyone for putting this little gathering together. I'm also a director f on the board for this organization that hosts the space, uh, Shorefront and we uh, invite you to uh, visit us often and become a member and support it along with the study group. Make sure that they get the funds they need to get nice banners and make sure everyone can see everything and uh, help the group grow. Quickly, uh, I do have a mailing list, an email list. I highly recommend you uh, subscribe to it. It's once a month. I send out a message with information about classes I'm doing, about specials that we have, and you'll get links to some of the um, articles and videos that I do. And every week, we have a live presentation, almost like what I'm doing here, uh, streaming on the internet. So uh, sign up so that you can get that information. Quick survey, how many of you have computers? Okay, I have to ask. Okay, how many of you have scanners? Okay. How many of you have digital cameras? <laughs> okay. And uh, how many of you use Adobe Photoshop? <laughs> how many of you use Adobe Photoshop Elements? Uh -huh. you, you might have oh, one of them. Right, right. Well, I need to know because I got to craft this so that it fits your what you have. You know, when, when you're, you know, you look at you, if you happen to see any of my work or if you go online, you'll see a lot of before and after images. You'll say, wow, that's a pretty messed up picture there. The problem is we need people to understand that you can prevent your pictures from looking bad or getting worse. So we have to know first about prevention. You have an automobile. Some of you have an automobile you got to get the oil change, got to get that tire pressure checked. If you don't do those things, it breaks down pretty fast. Same with your body and same with your family history. So we need to talk a little bit about photo preservation before I get to the nitty gritty. And I have very little time, so I'm going to go kind of fast through it. And if we have questions, hit me after the talk just so that we can get through this. And I hope to get to a demonstration. And I forgot to ask, did anyone bring any old photos with them? I see someone in the back with a plastic bag. <laughs> Come around this way. Come around this way. Come. OK, I don't want you to trip. All right. So why don't you bring that up? Bring, bring, bring that up. Uh, and hopefully I have time. I'd like to actually work on a picture. All right. So there's two stages to this preservation, all right? It's analyzing what you have. How many of you have some type of family photographs, whether it's your generation, your children's generation, or even further back? Raise your hand. Okay, you have something. Great, yeah, yeah, put, put. Okay, Could, do you have others? Yes, I do, but okay. that's the worst one. That's the worst okay, one. Right, yeah, but, but please. Put them here. Just put the whole bag here. Yeah. Just put it here. Just put it here. Because, because every picture is important to discuss, if, if possible, if I can get to it. Um, so taking care of what you have. And then there's the other stage, and that is where someone like myself will come into play, whether I'm teaching you how to do it or whether you hire me to do it, and that's digitizing it and digitizing generally means scanning it in and maybe working on it. There's some terms you should be very familiar with now. Okay, we have a term called archival. I put quality in brackets because just because something is archival, well, we need to understand what that really means. And what that means is it's a level of quality. 
So if you see something that says this material is archival, well, it's, it's talking about the quality of the material, how long it lasts before it starts to break down, <clears throat> and that would be between 50 and 100 years, generally. That's, that's what number I came up with in, in some of the research I do. Uh, we have uh, a term called PVC. This is, this is in all of your plastics, all your plastic materials, unless it says PVC free. So this is called polyvinyl chloride. There's another thing called lignin you should be familiar with. There may be products that say it's lignin free. Lignin is what's known as the impure organic matter found in wood. Now you can't take out all organic matter from wood or paper because it wouldn't be paper. But we have to get rid of the impure ones, which tend to be, tend to be more volatile and break down faster. CDR, CD-R, actually, got to be specific. It's called Once Recordable Compact Disc. These are little CDs that, if you buy music at a store, it's on these discs. You have CDRW, which is rewritables. These are CDs that you can actually write on and rewrite, erase and write again and erase and write again. Then you have DVD-R. DVD is simply like, just like a CD, but it just holds a lot more space. And it's primarily used for movies. So if you get a movie on, on a DVD disc, that's what it'll generally be on. There's DVD-RW or rewritable as well. And then there's dvd uh, uh, and CD plus R and plus RW and R2, we'll get into that. So let's talk about what to avoid here, certain things I'd like you, after you leave here today, if you're dabbling with it, I want you to reevaluate how you're using these things. When you're storing your photos and your documents, you want to get containers that are archival. Okay, archival quality. We do not want anything that does not say archival on it. We want to avoid materials that contain lignin. There's PVC materials. Another thing we want to avoid. There's conditions. How you're storing these photos. You have moisture. That's a real killer for your photos moisture. There's light, sunlight, more specifically. The sun is a massive star with lots of energy and heat and power on all kinds of wavelengths. It loves to fry things and cook them and give them life. But unfortunately, your photographs, they're not living anymore <laughs> and uh, they're just going to break down in the sunlight, just like everything else in nature. What will happen is you may notice the color will shift. You'll start, boy, that used to be such a colorful photo. And over the years, you don't notice it, but it starts to turn red or something. Orange. Yeah, or yellow or orange. <clears throat> Magnetic materials. Now, that's more specifically for um, your uh, uh, digital media, but it's still something to keep away because it will attract uh, pieces of metal, which could scratch uh, your prints or your, your documents. Dirt and pressure sensitive adhesives. It's basically tape. You don't need to be putting tape on your documents. All right, this will damage your documents. Uh, there is uh, rubber cement, paper clips, rubber bands, all these things. If they're on your pictures, I want you to go home, take them off right now, as soon as you get home. Writing on the originals. Okay, if you have to write on the originals, if you absolutely know, well, I've got to ID this and I don't know any other way, then do it on the top edge of the print or the document. So let's say this is my document. The subjects are in here. You see their heads and their faces. They're doing things. Well, then I should write up here. But let's not write on their faces. <laughs> and if you have to write on it, then write on the back, again, at the top edge, somewhere around here. Because at least when the ink starts to bleed through, uh, it won't go into the faces. Now, there's also a pencil. You can write with that. And the pencil doesn't have ink. 